Welcome, this is where nerds come to learn things. If it's your first time here, click on the subscribe button and on the bell icon to get notifications about new videos. Thanks for watching, hope you enjoy it. Alright, so here's a LG monitor, it's a Flatron WTT2252 uh, TQ. Um, it's completely dead. On the back there. So it's got DVI and a D sub connector, standard VGA type. So let's plug power into this and we'll see what happens. Just to prove it doesn't work. There's a button. Nothing. There's no lights, there's no activity. There's absolutely nothing, there's no standby light, it's completely dead. So, let's get this thing apart. So I think I'm going to take this foot off the back just to get the thing out of the way. I just want to go in and stay in. There we go. So that's that foot out of the way. There's a screw right there, hidden right there. It's nice of them. So, let's have a little inspection, see if I can see anything which might hint about things to watch out for when I pull it apart. Also, you've got the buttons down the bottom there. So, I expect the, the beds will just come off, and then I have to probably unscrew the screen and pop that out that way. Alright, let's try and get this beast open. There we go. Right. Now we're in. This is a very tight clip together system, I'll tell you. That is really tight on there. I didn't want this thing coming apart again. Well. This is probably the hardest one I've had to pull apart, yeah. Okay, it's in. It's always the fun bit. There's not a lot going on inside there. There's no screws. It's just sitting there. <laughs> that makes it easier. So, on off button panel and a control button panel. Pretty simple. Right, let's get this thing out of here. Look, see what we're dealing with. Okay, so that's the panel. I plug this wire here. Try and plug that wire there. Right. Pass the light section. That's the bit we're interested in. What is holding it on? Nothing. <laughs> what? It's just like seriously. It just sits there. That's weird. It's got a piece of tape. 
and the cover to get to the wires on the end. So you unplug those. And I'll spin us around so we can see. Alright, so that's just flipped over. So it just floats. That's wow. That is amazing. Remember, pink on the right, both of them. Pink downwards. There you go. Just look. Bit of tape holding that end on. Get this out. Wow. Okay. That was unexpected. I was expecting there to be some kind of like screws or something. Lots of bits of tape. So, obviously, a control board there with the uh, output connection there for the screen. The inputs there. Control signals on this one. Power supply coming in that side. Pretty simple. Very small little circuit. Not much to it, is there? What is that chip? So they've got themselves obviously a dedicated chip for this LG Simulator 2, as you expect. So, yeah. Who knows what that is? It says F Engine. Anyway, let's get this panel. How's that get off there? Probably clipped on. And that's a nice touch, I have to say, putting a panel over the top so you don't actually touch live circuitry power supply is bigger than natural logic okay so this has probably got some power in it so I did plug it in to try it out some discoloration but it looks more like flux residue or maybe slightly slightly warmer around here but that's transformer so it's not that unusual slightly warmer around there as well so we see a couple of big caps here. So I probe around, check for voltages on caps and discharge and that sort of stuff. Before I touch anything else, don't want to zap myself. That usually hurts, it's not good. Okay, so let's just probe around in here and see what we can find voltage wise and make sure it's all dead. I've seen floating systems before. Not many caps on there. Anyway, those are the, bu the bulk ones anyway. There was nothing on those, so it's probably fine. Let's take it out. If you see me jump across the room, you know why. Yes, I've still got a ring on. Yes, I'm still wearing a watch. I'm just mindful of the fact that I'm wearing a ring and a watch. I get commented quite often about the fact that I'm wearing a ring and a watch. So we'll inspection first and we'll see about what's going on. Because I'll see something obvious. Well, yeah, okay. There's a bunch of red caps on here. Straight away I can see that. So all these caps here have gone. Those five. All failed. That one there still looks okay. These two here look alright. That device looks okay, there's no signs of a hole or anything in it. So is that diode, that looks alright too. So it's probably just bad caps. These smaller caps over here, they look okay. Obviously those ones there would be bad, there's no point in testing those, but I'll, I don't know, do I need to replace that one too? What are they all? 470F 35 volt, 1000 UF 16, 1000 UF 16. There's a new F16, 470. So those are two. Those two there, 470, 35 volt. Here's a thousand UF16 volt. And that's another 470, 35 volt. So there's two types of cap there. 
470 50 volt, close enough. Alright, that's what brand are these ones? These are uh, Matsuta, is it Matsuta? I don't know, I can't pronounce that name. Matsuta? Anyway, it's a good brand. And so we want some thousands as well. So I'm just going to place these cats in them, we'll try it again and um, see if that sort of problem is. So it's a thousand at 16 volts. Uh, mm. Got a thousand at 10 volt. There's a 1000 at 25. Didn't I just buy some caps? <laughs> I did. <laughs> I did a mailbag the other day with, with some of these and, and let's put it back. So these are 1000 US 25 volt caps. Now it happens to be exactly what I need for this right now. Well, these are 16s, but no, I'm upgrading a little bit. So it's lucky that I actually purchased these, isn't it? Because it turns out I needed them. I was just restocking. Right, so I'm just going to float some leaded solder onto these joints to make these caps easy to get out. Or is there going to be a bit of a pain to desolder? Right, it's slightly more heat in my iron actually as well. Struggling a bit in this ground plane. So this is that little KSGR soldering iron soldering station thing which I featured fairly recently. I was about a month ago now. It's actually been really popular, it's had lots of views. It's been really well received. Um, it's probably one of my most popular videos actually in recent times, you know, over a short period of time. I think my most popular video is actually video number 80, I think it is. It's where I showed the insides of a iPhone USB cable. You know, pulling it apart, the intention was to fix it. I, up, I, I couldn't get to work again, but that was really popular. It's still popular now. It's like every month, it's the most popular video. It's incredible. I did that about two years ago. Anyway, um, that's those ones. This one over here. And I'll change that one as well because it's bound to go. But I hate this bloody. Dead free solder, just the joints always look like crap. They always do. This doesn't look good. Alright. Should make notes of polarity, shouldn't I? Is not on the board anyway, that's fine. I always like to try and make a note. Not like putting the cap in backwards. So those should all be the same values, make sure. 1000. 1000. 1000. Right. Negative to negative. This has been working a lot better since I did that filter change on it. Replace it with that other type and given that service and replace that hose. It's working much better again. Yep, I'm good. She's got these markings here for alternative componentry that's not on this board. Also use it for other models as well. Right. I'm not going to worry about putting flux on. It's probably fine just with the iron. Actually I'm going to need more heat. Let's do that. My camera auto focusing has been a real pain recently. It's been driving me nuts. I don't know what's going on there. I've probably got a setting somewhere that's not right. I did change it to face focus. Um, when I was doing the mailbag video stuff, and ever since then it's been a bit weird.
solder now. Right. Now, where's joints I didn't trust? Should do those two, I'll think about it. I'm not entirely sure about the whole principle of mixing lid in lid death free solder. Um, I don't know if it's a real issue or not, but I don't know. I just remember a bit of lead in there. Seems to be fine. Oh, these ones look dodgy. That's right. Oh, is it? Oh, no, that's right. So many joints which look just less than perfect because it's being lead free solder. Just look dull and look like just don't look nice. We don't like lead free solder. Alright, let's trim these legs off. We'll put it back together and try it out, see if it works. I'm not going to bother replacing the other caps. The other ones look okay. I mean, I could test them, I suppose. In fact, I should do some tests on the diodes, stuff like that, make sure they're okay. But seeing as it's got bad caps, it's just likely just not smoothing out, and so it can't uh, control the voltage correctly, so shutting down under protection. Right, I'm not going to clean the flux off, who cares, it's only a monitor. It's not like it's a precision piece of gear, is it? So if we look at this side of the board, first I'm going to make sure I've got all the caps in the right around. <laughs> mm. um, so obviously got the high voltage transformer here for the backlighting stuff. AC input, rectifiers, main smoothing caps, initial switching circuitry. I think there's a MOSFET. The actual controller circuitry over here, opto isolator right there, diodes there for the switching. Yeah, I mean, it's a pretty basic thing. So I'll cut a shock keys here, looks like SR, yeah, SR520 shock keys. So we'll just do some probe around to diodes and stuff just to make sure they look okay. There's not a lot to check there, there's another diode just there, the throw right bead on it. Also, extra filtering. Quick probe around, make sure just cursory look, make sure things look okay, and we'll carry on. Charging your cap up. Yep. It's probably because it's just charging the cap now. Yep, it's going the other way. So probably okay. Because of the capacitors across it. I expect these to be fine. I'd be really surprised if these are blown. These are the main rectifiers. They look fine. So I'm going to check that big diode over there. Capacitors, of course, which is charging up. Those are in parallel with each other anyway, they both go to the same thing, so I don't you need to check both sides. Yeah, because it's got capacitors and circuitry across them, so it's giving misreadings. So they're probably fine. I'd be surprised if there's a problem with those. And there's another little diode over there, which looks like a Zener. Let's do a little check on that too. Just to make sure it's not a short or anything. Yeah, it looks alright. So, yeah, it's probably fine. I think there's no issues there. It's nothing obvious. I'm sure I'll check that MOSFET too. It could be hard to check. A bit, sometimes it's a bit hard to actually get a central reading out of. Let's just have a look anyway. Find 
know where it is again, I lost it. A transistor. It's acting like a transistor, so yep, that looks fine. Okay, let's put it back together. Let's turn my desoldering gun off actually, I'll forget about it and leave it on all, all weekend or something. So I'm fairly confident that's alright. It's always when you're fairly confident when things go horribly wrong, so this could be entertaining. So do I risk completely reassembling it and see if it goes, or should I do some cursory power supply checks before I put it all back together? Yeah, it'd be sensible to do checks before I put it back together, wouldn't it? Let's just power it up like that and see what we're getting. It does have markings on here for 22 volts and 5 volts and DIM and MS, whatever that is. Um, just look, check the caps on this board, that look okay. Nothing obvious at least. So I'll check for 22 volts, 5 volts, and DIM is probably another 5 volt rail, I'm guessing. Then we'll see how that looks. This one I'd have to remember not to rest my hand on there like that, because that would be good kind of inconvenient. Right, power is on. I can hear some whining. Nothing there. We have a 5 volt rail. We have a dim rail which is 3.3 .3 volts, which sounds about right actually. That could be a correct voltage. And we've got 3 volts on the MS, whatever that is. So maybe the 22 volt rail doesn't come on until you power it up, I mean that's possible, or that, two, that rail's dead. I might trace that back and just have a little look, just to confirm that one. See if I make any sense of it. Let's just have a little look. I would have thought that rail would be live. comes down here, it looks like it's a MOSFET there, that U303 is Montez. There's a cap across there, little service mount ceramic cap, which looks okay, can't see any signs of failure, can't always tell though. One of the caps are replaced which is right there which is actually on that rail. I think it's got, a, might be a fuse or something there, I'm not quite sure. Let's take it back out again, I need to look at that. just want to be sure, I'm just suspicious 20 volt rail should be running, it's not. Caps are discharged, that's fine. At least the bulk ones are, so it should be alright. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, that's that's 22 volt rail there. That's a jumper, alright, which I thought was there. Turn the board over, there's no jumper installed. So obviously that 20 volt rail is not used and there's no pins on the header. So it's fine. Let's put it back together. I'm fairly confident it's okay then. As soon as I had a 5 volt and 3.3 .3 volt rail, we'll carry on. It's probably outputting directly off the board instead rather than going through the header. It's 
That's probably what the difference is there. The bin, that's right. The chassis made it bend slightly, but obviously where it's pressed it must be tipped over very slightly. I just saw the, the ball bend very slightly as I tighten that down. Right. So these are the caps over in it. I'll just put this panel back on here. Um, these brands are Suscon. Like, there you go, Suscon. Yeah, that's like a perfect brand name, isn't it? Let's make suspicious capacitors. Let's call them Suscon. Brilliant. Right. Make sure I get all this right. That way up. Blue was on the top, so I'll make sure I get the same round. Where's the slot? Here it is. I sort of amazed the whole thing's like sticky tape. That is the weirdest bloody assembly I've ever seen. I've never seen one like that before. Pink goes on the right. Who knows, it might not matter, but they've got them colour coded for some reason. So it may matter. So make sure you put them right around. Sticky tape. Just <laughs> doesn't really instill much confidence, does it? I think I'm sitting in a better right place. I think I might stick some more tape on that. I just don't trust it. Um, just something. Just. I'm just amazed by that. You thought they found some better way of doing it, you know, like other monitors I've seen have got little um, hooking sections, you know, where it sort of just hooks on. It doesn't even have to be screwed, you just have like a little hook on there, you know. And you have like this piece folds over and then take down to lock to latch it. I'll just need to put this piece back in. Let's fold this tape back out of the way in. I've got to lift this up a little bit. Of course now I can't lift up it because I taped it down. Uh. That's like a. Oh, this is also scary. Those screws there. It's right on the back of the panel. If you had a, a screw which is a bit too long, I could see that going quite bad. <laughs> you know? Yeah. If the screw's too long, it can end up going straight through the back of the panel or breaking the LCD. Mm, what a fan. Not a fan of this construction at all. Um, the wires there, okay, make sure I'd lost anything. Only three hands, anyway. I'm not scary to turn it upside down and put it back together because I'm worried about the thing falling apart. lined up. Let's try powering it up and see what happens, see if it works. Oh, we've got a, we've got a, uh, a light, got a blue light on there, and we've got a picture. Check signal cable, yay, it's fixed. Um, let's push the random buttons. Oh, this is, hold on, check signal cable, TCO fail, oh, that's not so good. Tcon fail. So we have half of a working monitor. Mm. What's going on there?
No, it's not locking something. Don't know. Is it fixed or not? I need to plug this into a source, really. I mean, the screen is there. So I don't see how the T-Con could be failed because the screen is running. Um, <laughs> is it just because I don't have a signal going on? No. So I just plugged this monitor into a, uh, a source and the pictures work and the error message thing, that box that was there floating around, that went away and the menus buttons are all working and stuff like that. So it's, it's fine, it's working. So I can put it back together. Excellent. Yeah, I've made sure I've missed any bits, so everything's hopefully in there. Because the amount of times I put bezels on and forgotten, uh, I put a screw in or haven't screwed the screen back in. That kind of thing. This is all there. It's all good. It's the bezel back on. Oh, here's something floating around then. And this one here has got to go back in. Hold to find the bezel. Alright, so that's that monitor fixed at least. The holes in there hard. I like relatively easy jobs like that, nice and straightforward. It's nice to get them occasionally. Where's that screw going in? Come on. Oh, come on, it's going to be a pain, isn't it? It's not a different lens, are they? No. Only just going through that piece of sheet metal inside, which is good because otherwise it screws to the back of the screen. All right, all good. This has got a tilting base, so there we go, it's back together. Pair it back on, plays a nice little chime. And there's the screen. Now it says this TCO fail interestingly, but it, when you've got an input plugged in it works fine. So go figure, it doesn't give any messages in. I guess it's just because there's no input message. It's assuming there's a problem, which is, it seems to work. So I'm going to call that a repair. It's just a shame it's not HDMI, because I need another HDMI monitor. I'm not sure what age this thing is actually. I think it's fairly old. I mean the screen quality looks okay. It's not wonderful I don't think. Let's have a look. What year did this thing say it was? February 2008. So this thing's 19, uh, 19, 11 years old. So it's a fairly old monitor, but yeah, it you know it works. Works now. Thanks for watching. Buttons along the bottom, I hate that kind of thing, buttons along the bottom. I hate buttons where you can't see them, or you can't see what the labelling is, because then you can't actually see what you're doing, you have to take a guess. It's pushing a button at random and going, oh, what's that do? I hate that design. I don't know why they keep doing that. At least this one's got markings on it, but some don't. This one doesn't actually say what they are. In this case, it's not too bad. It's marked on there anyway, so this one's not too bad. But I've seen other ones where the buttons are on the back and there's no markings. Both of my monitors over there, which I use on my computer, they've both got that problem. They've got buttons down the back of them or on the side of them. You can't, you can't even see what to do. I ran for today. My focus, oh, camera's going to focus again. Piece of shit. I'm getting so sick of this camera doing this. I need to figure out what's going on with it. It's driving me nuts. The bloody camera's not focused again. <laughs>